thing called neuro-linguistic programming. And NLP is nothing more than finding, you know, with depressed patients, what we have found with people who are severely depressed and who've been on Prozac and so on, what we do is we take them off the Prozac and we, they measure the brain and the chemistry of the brain, and then they will ask the person to no longer identify with an event in their life that is causing them to be depressed, but instead to step outside of their body, to become the observer to it, and instead of saying, okay, here's another thing that's causing me to, to be depressed, you say, you put your attention on something else, and the thing you put your attention on is, there goes my brain again misfiring. It is doing something that it has been trained to do, and you're the observer, you're just watching it. And when people then are trained to put their attention on any moment in their life, that they were happy, that they were fulfilled, that they were, as you mentioned, that they were in love, that the chemist, then they, they measure the chemistry through an MRI, they measure the chemistry of their brain, and their brain has changed exactly the same way that taking one of these pills does, except there's no side effects. One of, the, one of the biggest obvious facts that always uh, gets me upset is Prozac, one of the biggest selling drugs on the planet, has been verified in a laboratory testing by the drug companies to be no more effective than a sugar pill. Yeah. And yet it's billions of dollars in this, and that's because people believe in Prozac. But that's called the placebo effect. And yet the side effects from Prozac huh. are, are disastrous. Your own brain is your best pharmacy. Mm. Everything in your head will fix everything in your body. And that's all we really need to know, but we need to re-educate ourselves to access that. So the fate of the cell was controlled not by the genes. The fate of the cell was controlled by the environment. We see ourselves as single individual entities. This is a misperception. You are not a single entity. You are a community because the living things are called cells, and you are made up of about 50 trillion cells. So your body is a community. And why that's relevant is when I would work in my cell cultures and I'd take my culture dish and put it into a bad environment, the cells will physically get sick, you can see that, they'd stop growing and they'd start dying, and then I'd take that culture dish, same dish, move it out of that bad environment, put it into a good environment, the cells would immediately recover, start growing and reproducing and flourishing. Why is that important? Because think about this as who you are. You are skin-covered Petri dishes you have 50 trillion cells in your petri dish under your skin you take your petri dish and put it in this negative environment i can assure you i already know what's going to happen you're going to cause those cells to get sick not that the cells are organically sick they're just complementing what the environment is and the relevance take your skin covered petri dish move it into a better environment and the cells will immediately get well and the relevance about that is you're not a victim you're a master you are the controller of this, and we were not teaching that in school. All we were teaching is, victims, you don't heal yourself, somebody else does it, and that was totally wrong. Bruce, you were saying you change your thinking, and that is what erases, essentially, the disease. But how do you, how do you tell your cells from your mind, go do it now, please? I mean, it's, <laughs> is it that simple? Well, it's, it's simple, and then there's a little mystery. So let's put the, clear the mystery up. There's two parts to the mind. There's the conscious part and the subconscious part. And they're profoundly different pieces. They're not the same thing. The conscious part has your source, your spiritual connection to it. It's your thinking mind. But here's what's important. The conscious part is the part of the mind that has your wishes, your desires, your aspirations, what you want from life. The subconscious mind is a machine. It's a record playback de device. You habituate a program, you repeat something enough times, it's recorded in the subconscious mind, you push the play button and it continues to play that for the rest of your life unless you rewrite the program. There has been a tendency for us to think that we run our lives with our conscious mind. I want this in my life, this is my desires, these are the things that I want. So we have a perception that our conscious mind is running the show. It has now been recognized by neuroscientists that this is totally incorrect that the conscious mind only operates about 5% of the day at the most and generally about 1% of the time, meaning your life is being driven by your subconscious. Now here's where the disconnect comes from. The primary programs in your subconscious mind you acquired from other people. We now know very clearly that we are already downloading programs in utero. 
when we are in a fetal stage, we're already downloading behaviors that we're acquiring from our parents. And, and when you're born, uh, it's already been determined about half your personality is already established at the time of birth. Things that we have no cognizance of, no awareness of, because they were so early in our lives, are things that are programming our lives on a day-by-day -day basis, mm -hmm. which means there's a tendency to disempower us, and that's what the programs in the subconscious are. You've heard parents talk to kids like, who do you think you are? You don't deserve this. You're not smart enough. You're a sickly child. And here's the simple point. If you're under six years of age and you hear these proclamations, they go straight down into the subconscious mind and they're programmed there. Now you ask, why is my life difficult? And the answer is this, because only 5% of your life is coming from what you want, and 95% is the program from the subconscious mind, which is programmed by others, and almost all of that is limiting your ability. So 95% of the day, you're not following what you want, you're following other people's programs. I'm not talking about a terminal illness here. I'm talking about how can I make myself feel better in the next 30 minutes while I sit down to work out this writing deadline and so on. And things like you talk about in your book, things like meditation, things like getting quiet, but even more than that, and we talked about this at the break, it's like what kind of energy field do you find yourself in? So this isn't just like good stuff to, to read about and to write about. This is something that you can really go inside Whoever you are listening, what, what, whatever your life situation is, you have to make decisions. I don't go for physicals. I don't want anybody looking at me and, and telling me, this, you know, this test is up, this one is down, this is an indication. You got a 17% of living another three years, you got an 18%. I don't want to hear anything like that. I, was, I, I figure that the less I know about what is wrong and the more I believe about what I have the power to do something about, that, isn't that changing your perception? Isn't that entering into that subconscious world and, and putting your attention on something that you want rather than on something you don't want? Albert Einstein once said that the most important decision you'll ever make is to decide once and for all whether you live in a universe that is supportive, that supports you and is friendly, or whether you live in a universe that is hostile and is non-supportive.